This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is a very interesting case. So it's quite a long case as well with a lot of things to learn and teach. And that's the reason I thought I'll make it into two parts and let's see how things go. Now, the first part will show an event which happens and we'll try to analyze how it could have been prevented. Now, this is a young colleague of me who is operating on an eye with pseudo exfoliation, non-dilating pupil, and she's sitting temporarily and performing a fake emulsification. The young surgeon, an accomplished SIC surgeon and is has performed around 120 fake emulsification surgeries and uh, she has reasonably good surgical skills. And let's try to analyze when things don't go as we plan. The decision making is hampered because our brain is clouded during that moment. So let's try to discuss all of these aspects in this case. So this is a non-dilating pupil and she's prepared well for it. She's going to implant a pupil expansion device. She's going to use the BHEX string and this is probably her maybe second or third device in usage. And she's done a reasonably good job with that and uh, I think she was well prepared and the implantation of the ring was spot on. So now is the time to perform the rexus. The rexus is around 5 millimeter. So far so good. The sculpt is being done. And the nucleus is broken into two halves. Now she's going to divide this each heminucleate into smaller fragments. And at this time she notices that the patient is slightly uncomfortable. He's telling he's going to cough. And nevertheless the first heminucleus is emulsified. As she's about to deal with the second heminucleus, she's noticed that there is an increase in the positive pressure and uh, she's literally seeing that the posterior capsule has come anteriorly. Uh, she's asking the patient to breathe easily, take deep breaths just to relax him. The second piece again is eventually chopped into smaller fragments and then aspirated but one fragment goes in hiding behind the iris. At this point now she's in a dilemma whether to take care of the small piece or she go in and remove the cortex and I think she thought that she's going to deal with the nuclear fragment later let us go and deal with the cortical aspiration. Again as she is about to begin cortical aspiration she again notices that the posterior capsule is bulging out, she pushes in OVD to push it back, talks to the patient, reassures, waits for the patient to recuperate and then again the surgery is continued. The patient says he is comfortable now and uh, he is breathing alright and everything seems to be good so she begins the surgery but at this time the pressure is relentless. And as she's about to begin the cortex aspiration, the patient has a severe bout of cough and which is relentless. So as she's getting ready to do the cortex aspiration, uh, there is one important visual cue which is there. We can see these tiny particles floating in the burger space much posteriorly below the posterior capsule. Well, that should raise some concern. The reason for the positive pressure is obvious. There is fluid misdirection which is happening because of the lax zonules and uh, the fluid is traversing across the zonules into the burger space and then that is the reason why there is immense positive pressure. But this has not caught her attention. She's just going to go in with the bimanual INDA now. So with a little bit of difficulty, she's going on to do the cortex aspiration. But the surgeon has realized that there's literally no space. With great skill and patience, she somehow manages to clear all the cortex. Now there is a small fragment which is still left under the iris. And that has caught the attention back and she needs to remove it. With the Sinsky hook, the nucleus is pushed to the central uh, area from under the iris. 
and at this point you can see the iris is also sitting inside the wound suggesting the positive pressure so this is a, indeed a very difficult situation and uh, she has taken adequate care to push in ovd before going into emulsify uh, the small fragment she negotiates the phaco probe through the shallow enter chamber and as she is performing the fragment emulsification last piece the bulging poster capsule is caught in the port of the phaco tip and we have a nice round poster capsule excess the piece which is in front of the tip is emulsified and then before coming out she injects viscoelastic to ensure that the chamber does not shallow and they pulls the phaco tip out of the eye but by this time the damage is already done so let me pause here and then let's try to analyze how things went okay so i want you to write down like whenever we have a significant intense positive pressure what would you have done for the surgeon this was unexpected and this is when your preparedness does matter if you're aware of such situations happening and you've seen someone else undergoing this situation now this is a very stressful situation there's no doubt about it uh, we have significant positive pressure the patient is not cooperative there's literally no space in that chamber just one last fragment to be emulsified now how do you analyze Uh, this difficulty and is there a way to work around this problem without causing the poster capsule tear so let me pause the video here and let me ask you to write down the points like how are you going to address the situation so what should be your thought process when you are encountering such a situation where there is a positive pressure and you need to understand why it is happening okay i assume that you noted down your observations and what would you have done or what should be your thought process okay whenever we have a difficult situation like this i think the first thing would be buy yourself some time you know push in ovd come out and then take a half a minute to just analyze and visualize what are things which can be playing a role to have created the situation now we have a situation where there is intense positive pressure the chamber is shallowing there is little bit of iris prolapse there is no space in the inner chamber and what are the things which could have been happening here well let's write down the three most common reasons why we have such a situation as intense positive pressure it is not exactly an intraoperative hard eye but it's something mimicking that okay the most common obvious one would be external pressure on the globe which could be a tight speculum tight drape uh, sometimes the drape bag is filled with fluid and that itself can squeeze the eyeball so just ensure that these external factors which are not very serious but they are taken care of just going in giving a relaxing cut to the drape or losing the speculum this should just help this cause but obviously that was not the cause in this particular patient so in this situation we are worried about two more serious issues number one would be an impending supracoral hemorrhage second one would be the fluid misdirection the fluid misdirection retake let's try to analyze how to rule out each of them So in this case it looks more likely to be a fluid misdirection simply because looking at the eye status this is a pseudo exfoliation i we expect zonular weakness whenever we have zonular weakness the barrier effect of the zonules is not that great so as a result whenever there is a fluid percolating in the inner chamber there is always a risk of it going across the zonules combined with it if we have an anterior hyoid detachment there's a vagus ligament or weak or absent then the has got great access to traverse across the zonules into the burgus space and it accumulating inside the burgus space itself will push the poster capsule forward bulging it and there's a reason why we have the positive pressure so why not supracoral hemorrhage well obviously would like to always look into the ocular risk factors and the systemic risk factors the ocular risk factors would be you know when you're operating in eye with an angle closure glaucoma or patient whose pressure is very high or patient systemic morbidity like patient is very elderly or uh, systemic hypertension these are risk factors we think of and it is not necessarily associated with any evidence of zonular weakness so that was a situation which clearly is hinting at the fluid misdirection being the more obvious cause the most important clue i would suggest looking for is always when you look at these tiny particles floating around in the uh, burgus space uh, 
uh, that should indicate that the fluid also has got access and there is always a risk of fluid misdirection happening. If I see that, then I would always weigh in more with the fluid misdirection as a cause rather than supracoronal hemorrhage. So assuming that you're now your diagnosis fluid misdirection, what do you do now? There's still the last fragment to be emulsified. The pressure is great. What would you do now? Again, I'll just pause the video, take a couple of seconds to think about it and write down. See, the idea of this exercise is to motivate you to think and strategize what would you have done in such a situation. So we need to understand that uh, whenever fluid gets access to burger space, there is no valvular mechanism that it cannot come out. It also does come out. You just have to wait for some time. The fluid which has gone behind the posterior capsule again can come across the zonules back into the antechamber as well. That is a possibility. The first solution would be just to wait for a couple of minutes. Usually when you wait for a few minutes, the eye softens, the fluid gets out of the eye and again you can feel that the antechamber can be reformed and they can go ahead and emulsify the last fragment. In the worst case scenario, if that doesn't happen, then I would have probably started IV mannitol on the table itself uh, and then waited for the eye to soften. The third option would be uh, to do a parse planar tap no need to do any antivitrectomy, just doing the pass planar tap and then you're given an exit um, more to the fluid which is accumulating behind the burger space. Uh, that would be probably be my third option because again it would be an extra intervention there. Uh, nevertheless, these are the three options but most often they're not. Just waiting for maybe a few minutes would do the job for us. So then again you go in and fill in the OVD, push the nucleus up anteriorly and then go ahead and uh, perform emulsification. One has to memorize that these are the three steps which you're going to follow when you're faced in a situation where you're suspecting fluid misdirection. So if your mind is well prepared, you would be coming across victorious in such a situation. So obviously now the posterior capsule tear has happened and uh, the vitrectomy needs to be performed. And the what is the right way to perform vitrectomy and what surprise I had while managing this case would be the talk in the next video. So that was it. Thank you for watching and see you in the sequel part 2 of this video.